today we'll be discussing the concluding part of our discussion on corona amid corona and i'll do a quick background and then we'll move forward so i discuss basically three broad things one is look within look up and look ahead so in look within we do from the bhagavad gita to understand our own indestructibility then we look up to understand how uh, when some things happen what is the role of god in it so there i talked about the acronym meta and we talked about how we can mitigate immigrate or elevate tolerate and appreciate the idea is that whenever something happens there are three levels of causation the immediate cause remote cause and the ultimate cause and each cause has to be addressed at its particular level and so today i'll talk about look ahead and in this i'll talk about broadly three things we'll focus on one main theme so to be able to pursue things properly we need to have the proper uh, consciousness so now i'm amid such a difficult situation as we are in it is very difficult to be in a positive frame of mind so if our consciousness is dependent only on the situation then it will be impossible for us to maintain that positive frame of mind so we can't be grateful for all situations but we can be grateful in all situations for all situations means that particular situation is difficult and we can't uh, we would much rather that the situation had not come in our life but now that it has come in this situation what can we do so we can be grateful in all situations and for that purpose uh, how can we go about doing this i'll talk about whatever background we have discussed till now so today session is theme is going to be okay how do we move forward we got an understanding of ourselves we got an understanding of uh, god's grace but look ahead how do we move forward so to move forward we need to utilize whatever resources we have with us and we can move ahead this uh, i'll talk about an acronym an mnemonic tool ace so to be grateful in all situations we can look for Uh, the good we look for the good around the bad look for the good that helps to counter the bad and look for the good that may emerge from the bad so look for the good around the bad that when something bad happens our mind tends to obsess on it and by that obsession it seems to make things much worse so if we can avoid that obsession we can move forward positively so we expand our consciousness look for the good around the bad now can we go to the next slide for around so count your blessings and make your blessings count when how do we look for the good around the bad at a practical level when something bad has happened you know okay this terrible thing is there but what are the what are the good things there in my life sometimes we just get so caught in the bad things that we don't even recognize what is right or what is good so if we consider the history of humanity uh, we have had far greater catastrophes than the present Uh, in terms of scale how bad the present will turn out to be we don't know but we have had the black plague which decimated about one third of humanity uh one third of half of europe possibly one third of humanity we don't have one fifth to one third to one fifth we don't know the statistics so we didn't have census that reliably at that time uh, <clears throat> so like that there have been many many diseases in general inside us we have our mind and our intelligence so our mind will always look at the problems 
but we can look at the blessings. So the blessings, we at least have a system of awareness by which we know what is the danger and then awareness can lead to alertness. So what are the good things in our life? In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 17th chapter, Krishna talks about austerity or discipline. And in that he says that the most, that the discipline of the mind begins with uh, cheerfulness or satisfaction. Manaha prasada saumyatva mauna matva vinigraha bhava sam shuddhi rityetad tapo manasa muchate. So manaha prasada. Manaha prasada is, is a cheerful disposition or we could say satisfaction, a positive attitude. And the Bhagavad Gita says that this should be seen as a discipline of the mind. Discipline of the mind means, or austerity of the mind, the word that is tapa. That means that austerity is not something that comes automatically to us. In today's world, we use the word austerity often in an economic sense, that the government has imposed some austerity measures on the state. Uh, traditionally, austerity was used in a more individual sense for from physical austerity, say fasting. So, our mind will go towards negative thoughts. And by spiritual knowledge, we can expand our consciousness and look at the positive. Now, looking at the positive is a is a important, no well-known principle. Sometimes it may seem like cliched. But the idea is, a spiritual knowledge expands our vision so that we can see what is positive. That uh, if we are having largely a materialistic conception of reality, then we th- our vision becomes like a narrow tunnel vision. And in that tunnel, some train seems to be charging towards us and we feel, this is the end of my life. But when our consciousness expands, we see that Actually, yes, this disaster is there in my life, but I am an eternal being and there is a divine plan that is operational. So, our consciousness expands. The Bhagavad Gita gives the example of an ocean and that can be contrasted with a puddle. Now, when there is a puddle and suppose a stream of water, uh, there is a small puddle and a river is flowing along that way. If a river comes into a puddle, it will get completely overrun, over flooded and the surroundings will all get devastated. But instead of a puddle, there is a large ocean and a river flows into it. Nothing will happen to that ocean. The ocean will just absorb it. So, spiritual knowledge can help us to expand our consciousness so that instead of it being like a puddle, it expands to become like an ocean. When that happens, uh, now how does our consciousness expand? What do we mean by expansion of consciousness? It simply means that uh, that the size of what is present in our consciousness. If we are focusing on small things, obsessing over small things, then our consciousness becomes shrunk and small. When we focus on large things, then our, the size of the object of our primary attachment determines the size of our consciousness. So spirituality expands our consciousness and enables us to perceive the eternal, to perceive that which is unchanging within us and above us. Look within and look up as we discussed. So this expansion of consciousness is what can help us to look for the positive. Uh, and so right now, look for the good around the bad. Yes, this problem is there, but we need to not, we need to definitely be aware of what is going on. But if we just let ourselves be bombarded by the negativity, oh, this is happening over there, that is happening over there, that is happening over there, then over a period of time, we'll get exhausted, we'll get drained. So, our spirituality can act as a resource by which we can expand our consciousness and thus we find that, okay, this thing is this thing is a problem, but there are many things which are still right in my life. And 
<coughs> when we do this that gives us some sense of confidence and sense of resourcefulness in such times the biggest danger we could say at uh, at one level one danger can also be complacency that we think this is not going to happen to me but other other uh, danger can be panic paranoia so often when we feel powerless oh life is so terrible things are so terribly wrong so what do i do we look for the good around the bad look for the good around the bad and each one of us we affect each other now we have social distancing which is important to protect ourselves simultaneously we need to know that whether we are physically close or far from each other we affect everyone else not everyone in the sense that everyone everyone in the world but everyone in our particular circle that are there our consciousness affects others so this is look for the good around the bad we now i talk about two things over here that uh, within us our mind is like a child the childish impulsive part and the intelligence is meant to be like the adult or the uh, reflective part so the world externally with the media will report so many problems our mind will obsess on the problems we need to make sure that we focus our intelligence and look for the positives look for the blessings so <clears throat> count your blessings and then make your blessings count make your blessings count means dwell on those blessings dwell on the positives so what could be the positives now we can not just related with this particular uh, particular problem but overall what are the positives in our life when we look at those we may have we may have overall good health we may have good education we may have reasonable we have good fine reasonable financial situation we may have a good family good community whatever it is that we value in our life and whatever is of value in our life if we list that and then we dwell on that the way we make our blessings count is by keeping our consciousness focused on those things now then now this is you may say okay all these things are good in my life but there is i still have this problem how do i deal with it that brings us to next part look for the good to counter the bad can you go to the next slide look for the good to counter the bad now counter means like i said that ama satisfaction i mentioned is the austerity of the mind the bhagavata 716 says so now for countering we have to look at what we have not what we don't have so for example we feel that oh this disease doesn't have any cure this is it doesn't have any vaccine yeah that's true but what do we focus on we have to, we have to focus on what we have not what we don't have that gives us a sense of a sense of uh, agency sense of initiative of what can i do what, what is it within my power to do so basically when we talk about spirituality the bhagavad gita strongly endorses it outlines various forms of spirituality and talks about bhakti spirituality quite elaborately so bhakti has two distinct aspects that there is uh, in the first session itself we started talking about how there are things in our control and there are things not in our control and we human beings exist within nature also also slightly above nature in the sense that we have free will by which we can choose our responses significantly our free will is much more developed than of the rest of creation so by that what happens is that we can choose not just our actions but also our thoughts we can observe our thoughts and decide which thought to focus on and among all the resources that we have the most fundamental resource for us is our own consciousness if our consciousness is filled with negativity or uh, <clears throat> fear or resentment frustration hopelessness then that foundational resource is lost for us so we feel learn to look at what we have rather than what we don't have okay I, in the previous uh, look for the blessings in our life and among those blessings what are the blessings that i can use to counter this particular challenge that i am facing 
So, once we look at that, we feel to some extent at least empowered by that. So, within bhakti, there are two distinct aspects in the practice of bhakti. We could say there is there is dependence on God and there is diligence for God. Dependence on God and diligence for God. That means that I said that there are certain things not in our control and certain things in our control. So for the things that are not in our control, there has to be dependence. And for the things that are in our control, there is diligence. So what is what are the resources available for us to counter this particular challenge? We look at those resources and we use those resources to counter the difficulty that we are facing right now. And <coughs> And the word counter also has a another literal meaning. Counter as a verb means to challenge or to fight back, to curb. Counter as a noun means that which we count, that which counts. We may have a counter on our phone uh, to keep track of certain things. So, you know, we will use the counter to counter. We use the counter, we count our blessings and then we use those blessings that we have counted to counter the challenges that we are facing. Oh, now I talk about this dependence and diligence. So, now in the, uh, the if we consider traditionally when we talk about devotion to God, it is often thought of in terms of prayer and surrender. So that is important, no doubt. So often we may have the example of the Queen Draupadi who surrendered to Krishna by raising her hands in helplessness. She was in a situation where she had tried her best but it was beyond her to do anything at that time. So she surrendered. That is dependence. And then there is the example of Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was told by Krishna to surrender. Arjuna said, yes, I'll surrender. Arjuna's surrender, however, was not by lifting up, uh, raising up his hands. It was by lifting up his bow. That lifting up his bow was in readiness to, to do his duty. His duty at that time as a martial guardian of society was to fight. So he did that duty. And what it means is that they were both aspects. Both are forms of surrender. For what is in our control, there is diligence. For what is not in our control, there is dependence. And this is, devotion is a dynamic combination of diligence and dependence. When, with this understanding, we move forward, diligence and dependence. So, we use what we have, the resources that we have to counter. And, <coughs> And that brings us to the third part, that is E, that is emerge. Look for the good that may emerge from the bad. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. The universe ultimately moves purposefully. It moves purposefully means that when we are going through difficulties, those difficulties at one level may seem to be arbitrary, random, but they are, there is a purpose. And that purpose is our own spiritual evolution. It's like our life, we are, we are spiritual beings who are on a multi-life journey of spiritual evolution. And the present situation that we are in is like one scene within one act of that play. And in one scene, it might appear as if uh, uh, the hero is being beaten, pounded by the villain again and again and again. You think, what kind of picture is this? But actually, it's, it's not that simple. That although the hero might be pounded, but it's just one scene. 
we move forward the the plan will emerge so there is a purpose by which uh, according to which things move forward in reality so one example to illustrate this <clears throat> suppose there is a bird the bird is on a, sitting on a branch and this bird while sitting on the branch suddenly notices the branch starts shaking now when the branch starts shaking and it seems that the branch might break so the bird is concerned but the bird doesn't feel threatened the bird doesn't get uh, petrified by because the bird knows i have wings and even if the branch under it breaks its wings will flap and it will fly into the sky so we are all like that bird we are all uh, on our particular branches the branches in the world the branches are like our various shelters and comforts in the world the branches may be our he- our health our financial security our job our family and these are important for us they are what we are resting on what we are situated on at the same time we all have wings that wings are, the wings are our spiritual potential our capacity to understand life's ultimate meaning and purpose and to pursue that to to grow in our spiritual understanding and whatever happens in our life you know it's ultimately uh, meant for our spiritual evolution spiritual evolution means uh, expansion in our capacity to learn and our capacity to love we look at the outer world and we learn from it and then we express our actions with a mood of service the mood of devotion with the mood of contribution with a mood of love so this the capacity to evolve is latent within us so we have wings but we don't flap those wings once we don't, we don't exercise them or use them to fly so sometimes when the branch under us starts getting shaken that's the time when we need to start flapping our wings and sometimes the bird doesn't recognize that oh i have the wings with which i can fly but when the branch comes and branch starts branch starts getting shaken that's when it starts using it words and then it want discovers i can fly so for each one of us this is an opportunity look for the good that may emerge from the bad and whatever difficulty we face it is at that particular time when the difficulty is there it seems like a catastrophe uh, why is this happening but that very difficulty if it becomes an impetus for us to grow spiritually then it can bring the pol- bring positivity out of it for us so if we look at our own lives we'll find that this principle applies that at what appears at one stage to be a bad thing over a period of time turns out to be positive i have seen this happening many times in my life and one example I'd like to share when i was about 1 at that time uh, i was just learning my first steps to walk i suddenly fell down and i just couldn't walk after that so when i was taken to a doctor i was found that i had got polio now my parents had given me a vaccine but the vaccine had not been preserved by the doctor properly uh, and the vaccine ended up giving me the disease which it was supposed to protect me from so my parents were were devastated now i don't remember any of this i was too small but as i started growing up one of my earliest memories is my some of my relatives or acquaintances uh, neighbors had come to console my parents and 
my mother spoke that that you know, whatever he lacks in physical ability god has provided in intellectual ability so at that time i used to wonder who is who is this being that has such absolute authority over my life he can take anything or give anything but that uh, point stuck with me and i started uh, i started focusing on i actually had a intellectual inclination i like to read a lot contemplate and as i started doing that more and more it soon became clear to me that this was what i loved to do and over a period of, in my engineering times uh, i that was the time i always had an intellectual nature but the intellectual along with the philosophical and the spiritual that was the time when i discovered that so now when i look back at my life i see that that whatever happened to me in my childhood some of you might if you have seen me you might see that i walk you need crutches for walking and that's what most people notice the first thing when they see me but for me i hardly ever notice the crutches there is something which i need for walking and they are like uh, the glasses that i use on my eyes i can't see very well without them so i need them similarly i can't walk very well without the crutches i need them but okay just put on the glasses pick up the crutches and move on it doesn't occupy much consciousness within me it's it's something which i'm aware of but i'm not it doesn't consume me just like in the first session i had talked about we may have to live with fear but we don't have to live in fear so when our consciousness expands then the 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 problems that are there for us the problems may remain but those problems don't hope keep our consciousness in a strangle hold so <clears throat> overall the way i see it now is that a physical level inability or disability force in, made me more interested in intellectual things and for me the way to the spiritual was through the intellectual through reading books trying to understand things more and more so gradually i came at a point when i was i became very interested in spirituality and it was the philosophy that attracted me primarily and that's what sustains me now also so for all of us whatever are the challenges that we are facing now we need patience so what is the good that we may emerge from the challenge that the world is facing right now you know as I say, we don't know the future but broadly speaking we can say two three things one is that we have been living very uh, we have been exploiting nature very indiscriminately and that we need to become a little more harmonious with nature and there has been a significant rare increase in environmental consciousness in the last decade or so but this could accelerate our need for not just in a vague sense but recognizing that we need to live in harmony with nature that our actions do have consequences and if we disrupt nature we exploit nature that will have its results then the second uh, that could be one an increase environmental consciousness could be a result that might come in the broad world another thing that might happen is that we all we don't just relax i talked about the branches and the wings that to some extent when life becomes comfortable when the branch seems sturdy we may not not even ever ever exercise our wings i don't need these wings the branch is good enough but when we are exposed to the reality of how fragile the branch is then we focus on making sure that our, that we activate and exercise our wings so this can serve as a impetus for increase in spiritual consciousness not just for those who are already interested in practicing but for others also and there is I, in the first session i talked about this four square we are moving from 
inner power and outer power so we have moved a lot in terms of outer power in today's world but that alone is not enough we need inner power also so that could also be something positive that emerges uh, now there could be many positives right? we don't want to speculate over here but we need to be open and receptive so faith at one level means the commitment the depend diligence for doing what is in our power at the same time it also means openness and receptivity one definition of faith is that you now we take one step forward even when the full path is not clear for us we take one step forward even when the full path is not clear can you go to the next slide this is if there's a concluding message i would like to give if you forget everything else so you can take this one message with you s s s this is small simple steps now we can't light the world but we can light one corner of the world one corner of the world is our own heart spiritual at the very least and from their heart uh, we don't know how far that light can radiate the god in in the times of crisis like this there are times when there are some miraculous interventions by god by by which problems are addressed but more often than not god acts in this world not so much by uh disrupting natural laws or natural phenomena but by by acting through those phenomena so god's compassion manifests through human beings we are all parts of god mamai vam sho jeeva loke the bhagavad gita says each one of us is a part of part of the lord and being a part means we can play a part we can play a part in the plan of the lord god is not never the cause of anyone suffering we have discussed about re- immediate remote and ultimate causes but god can be the cure for everyone suffering and he can make us as his instruments so at one level we try to be as compassionate as kind as possible as composed as as positive as possible and that's important for us to do at our level however there is the light of the divine who is present in our heart that light of the divine can manifest from our heart into the world and then when that happens it's not just our light it's the light of the divine and that light can be far far bigger than what we may imagine now if we look at our own lives probably we can easily think about think of maybe one or two or three things which if we three negative things if we stop doing that we could we could become a more purposeful more productive more positive human being and we could think of three things which if we did we could become more positive so now we are not talking about necessarily three big life changing kind of things small simple steps maybe one thing is say if we tend to complain about the problem about say the imposed inactivity the inconvenience say okay if i find that i complain 20 times in a day about it for the next one hour i'll not speak and i'll not complain can i do that for the next one hour can i be positive if i see somebody is bored somebody is irritated instead of letting them get to my nerves can i try to respond calmly maturely for the next one hour yeah i think one hour i can do it so let me try to do it for one hour and then when we do it for one hour it's like we don't see the f- we don't see the full path ahead but we can see one step ahead so if we see that one step ahead 
we can take that one step ahead and we can move on based on that now if we do that what happens by it we move one step forward and then if we pull our act together if we use the spiritual principles to pull our act together and we all can do better more than what we are doing right now now how much more that we don't know in fact discovering how much good we can do that can become an exciting experience in our life in fact the most exciting experience of our life if we become channels or if we make our heart ready to become a channel for god's compassion to become a uh, instrument for the divine karuna then how much of an influence we can have that discovery is something which beckons all of us that can make our life exciting even now so that means that we rather than thinking i am one tiny being trying to face this global catastrophe trying to struggle to maybe adjust my thoughts and think positive find out scrambling for resources so that i can move on we if we turn towards krishna and take shelter of him then we can become instruments of the divine and to experience god's light god's love god's compassion flowing through us to benefit others and of course benefit us also that is life's most enriching experience so where is the karuna to be found among amid the karuna it is to be found in our own hearts by turning to the lord who is present in the heart connecting with him and then becoming a channel for him if we do that we can make we can as i said we can we can light our one one corner of the world and each of us decide to light one one corner of the world we can make the world a much more brighter place so the world can hurt us in many ways but greater than the world's power to hurt is god's power to heal rather than obsessing over the hurts that are coming upon us we turn inward we turn upward and then we look forward we look forward and we'll find that we will get the strength to face whatever situation comes in our life so to summarize we discussed how to find karuna amid amid the corona look within to understand our own spirituality our own indestructible core and by that get some calmness and clarity then we just said look up to understand that there is a higher plan that is working in life and that whatever happens god is not the immediate cause for it god is the ultimate cause and by god's grace whatever happens it all can be orchestrated for our ultimate good and today if we look ahead we discussed about primarily seeing the positive that is uh, how to be grateful even if we can't be grateful for all situations we can be grateful in all situations and we discussed the acronym ace a c e look for the good around the bad the good that may can help us to counter the bad and the good that may emerge from the bad so to good look for the good around the bad that means that we expand our consciousness from the materialistic tunnel vision to take in the whole of reality and then we are aware of the problem but we are not obsessed with the problem count your blessings and make your blessings count our if our mind goes towards the problems then we use our intelligence to focus on the blessings and look for the good to counter the bad devotion has two aspects one is dependence and the other is diligence what is not in our control we use it to what is not in our control we use it we depend on the lord for that what is in our control we diligently do what we can so look for whatever resources we have and use them to take thing uh, to move forward and then for what is the good that may emerge from the bad i discussed about how we are all on sitting like baby birds sitting on branches we are not aware of the wings that we have and the way we can fly with those wings but when the branch starts shaking that's when 
we are jolted out of our complacence and we are forced to raise our wings spread our wings and fly so our material shelters are like the branches our spiritual potential is our wing and this can help us grow spiritually and in that sense rather than getting caught in the present negativity we look forward towards the overall opportunity that life presents us and if we take up that opportunity to not just ourselves think positive but try to connect ourselves devotionally with the lord and we become a channel for his karuna to manifest through us even if we can't light the whole world we can light our corner of the world now, how much that divine light may manifest through us and how much of the world it can it can illumine discovering that can be our life's greatest exciting experience and although the world can hurt us in many ways greater than the world's power to hurt is god's power to heal thank you very much hare krishna are there any questions hare krishna prabhu ji this should be here yes hare krishna uh, i have one question Uh, so as we all know this uh, corona pandemic uh, it has brought uh, all the seven continents yeah so all countries to a screeching halt right now and of course this is not the first outbreak like this due to a virus uh, there had been outbreaks like this like uh, with SARS MERS Ebola and uh, numerous other viruses so uh, my question is that uh, why uh, I mean, what does it? Why humans don't learn from mistakes? Like, why we always forget the lessons uh, that we have to learn? And uh, because I have a feeling, I'm sure that all of us know that there's this outbreak can happen again in future, but it's through virus, maybe through something else. So why do humans don't learn our lessons? Or even if we do, why do uh, they don't stay with us for a longer time? and why don't we learn our lessons what lesson are you talking about in this context that be more cautious about the infections or what what, are, what is the lesson that you are talking about when we say we don't learn um so uh, i mean with respect to this outbreak uh, we as we all know that uh, like the most plausible reason why it happened was uh, due to the ill practices of wildlife for farming and wildlife yeah farming correct yes uh, in uh, some countries so and it does not happen in only one country it happens all over yeah, the world yeah that's true it's just that the other because uh, the other countries are not able to connect the dots uh, so yeah yeah so yeah. you know we don't have see we have swine flu we have we have but we don't have say uh, potato flu or we don't have uh, brinjal flu or we don't have uh, pandemics rising from largely from food that is more in harmony with what we as human beings are meant to live so broadly speaking see when we face problems as a eminent historian he said that the one lesson we learn from history is that we don't learn from history that was the will durant also said something similar uh, the idea here is that there are certain weaknesses to which we human beings are universally culpable so each generation sometimes has to learn its own lessons and rather than thinking that why don't we learn we have to we have to learn that by the default tendency of humanity is to gravitate toward ignorance and just like if if i have an object this is my hard discover if i leave let it go it will fall so sakale ne ha mahata yogo nashta paranta bhakshna says by the power of time knowledge goes down toward ignorance we or rather we go down from the state of knowledge toward the state of ignorance this is gravity pulls physical objects down similarly the in the material in the material world there is a gravity which pulls us down from a state of uh, learning to knowledge to a state of ignorance so this is just the way the world is so that now this doesn't mean that this is the way it is always going to be and we become pessimistic but we need to have a we need to have our basic understanding clear 
there will be the default tendency to gravitate toward ignorance to gravitate toward uh, repeating the mistakes that have been done in the past and that's why there has to be a conscious effort to spread spiritual awareness internally within us and externally to others it is to the extent that this is done to the extent that we consciously spread spiritual awareness to that extent we can move there is a possibility to make a positive difference so it's not just uh, informational knowledge it's the information is important to have and for many people the information also is not available as you said some people are not even able to make connect the dots so information is definitely important to have but the information has to be applied in place to it has to lead to transformation and often that requires some amount of purification so as we provide resources for spiritual understanding to people more uh, to to more and more of humanity we provide the resources some people take it up so many people don't but it, if you look at the history of humanity whenever there has been any significant raising of human consciousness through say the rising of any spiritual movement broadly how it happens is through the combination of brahmanas and kshatriyas there are some in wise spiritual intellectuals and then there are there are spiritually minded administrators heads of state you yes, see buddhism was just a small uh, buddha buddha was charismatic but he was, it was just a small group it is an ashoka took it up that's when he used all the state resources to spread so the idea here is that you know we keep sharing spiritual wisdom as much as we can and as i said when we share the knowledge sometimes how far the light may go through us we don't know so if we keep providing the resources for spiritual understanding sometimes it might reach a person who is very influential and that person can spread far and then certain lessons are learned through that so we we do our best knowing that the world has a particular nature and still although we could we could talk about negativity there is a certain rise in uh, satva guna at least in satvic consciousness through an increased inclination toward vegetarianism to environmental awareness yoga mindfulness so all these if you consider they are not just gross physical uh, physical interventions we are thinking of subtler principles and these can all be tapped to raise consciousness towards a direct more directly spiritual and devotional uh, understanding of reality does it address your question any other yes, question yes, Thank, thank you for your thoughtful question any other questions yeah hari krishna roo dhara pada vanchu here yes my sure my question is that uh, one level of uh, certain people are responsible for this uh, pandemic which is going on now at other level uh, i mean devotees like you or uh, who are very chaste and following at all levels they are also suffering i mean it could be a grass the devotee they are also suffering I mean, one business is getting a big penalty. So, please understand that uh, if then their uh, previous karma to suffer, uh, in spite of they for the few celebrations of their life, how do they accept that? Okay. So when we are uh, when we are facing some difficulties, even when we are trying to live purely. So these difficulties are caused by certain people who have done certain things, but how do we understand that those who are living purely also have to suffer? The specific cause of suffering is very difficult to understand. The Bhagavad Gita says "Gahana Karmano Gati." The Bhagavatam says that <clears throat> that even when great people, Bhishma Pitama says that even the greatest of sages, when they try to understand. that it's not possible to understand exactly why something happens so now 
karma is one potential source of understanding our focus should always be not on what is whose karma but on what is our dharma that means that if somebody is in difficulty then say somebody gets infected by this disease now is it their karma no if if say we are in a position to help them in whatever way if we are in the medical profession we can directly help them other way we can help them say in some practical assistance or at least some emotional support we shouldn't be thinking what is whose karma we gen- i talk about this multiple levels of causation immediate cause remote cause ultimate cause in the second session so now we when we interact with people we are not meant to we don't know what is the remote cause of anything that has happened so we are not meant to presume that there is a remote cause if from the immediate cause perspective there is no immediate cause at all then we we see that this is this is something which is shouldn't have happened and let me see what i can do to help so <clears throat> trying to tra- trace back to understand why something has happened it's very difficult to do at a specific level see we live in a complex interconnected society so if i am studying for an exam and i am staying in a hostel say and if somebody carelessly maybe uses a very high voltage uh, uh, device and that causes the whole power connection in the hostel to trip so now and i had to study for the exam but i can't study now i did not cause it to trip but it happened well rather than focusing on if we have the power to address that we definitely address at the practical level but if not then we have to means we we try to fix the power issue but if we can't then rather than trying to psych- analyze too much whether this is my karma or not see there is the po- if you there for the second session you may remember that there is god's will there is free will and there is evil but sometimes when something bad happens it could be that a new cycle of karma is starting and we happen to be there and we are victimized by that so rather than bothering too much is every suffering that is coming upon anyone is it if say some suffering is coming upon someone is it their karma the suffering is coming upon me is it my karma and more than focusing on what is anyone's karma we should focus on what is our dharma what dharma means what is the right thing for me to do what is the responsible thing for me to do in this situation and sometimes the sense, sometimes the understanding that this is my own karma may help us increase our acceptance philosophy is ultimately meant to be a resource for helping us grapple with reality i'll repeat this philosophy is ultimately a tool to help us grapple with reality uh, that reality is complex and if the philosophical understanding of karma can help us come to better terms with the situation that we are in then we can take that as a resource but if the philosophy of karma simply raises questions and you know what karma did i do when did i do it and why is this reaction coming to me now if that is the kind of questions our mind is going in that direction then we understand that the world is a complicated place and we are a part of a uh, of a world in which there are lots of terrible things being done even if we are not doing them so because we are a part of the society then we will be implicated by it and just like say if we are living in a city which is very highly polluted Now, we may not be causing the pollution but just by living in that city we will get that toxic air to some extent so similarly we live in a world where there's a lot of toxic karma happening and the results come to us just by being a part of that system so is it our individual karma could be but the important thing is not what our kar- what whose karma is but what our dharma is generally the we have to see philosophy as a tool for empowering ourselves to grapple with reality more effectively 
Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any one last question? Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is Shri Radhika. This is Karma Business. Oh, uh, thank Krishna. you so much for your lecture. Uh, yes. But I also was inspired to remember something from your book on lessons of Ramayana. You were describing how Ramachandra behaved in difficulties right before his coronation. Um, he was sentenced to 14 years in exile. So this example came to my mind, how he showed, even Lord himself uh, was put in that difficulty. When he um, showed to the world how to actually behave, uh, when destiny comes, something out of our control, Yes. Material elements over some people negligence or even somebody purposely trying to hurt you. How he addressed Saikea and how he addressed everyone in Ayodhya and um and pacify everyone. Yes, beautiful. Thank you for sharing and, that. Um uh, look look for being positive and people do Yes. And uh, he he said, Oh, there is no disturbance at all. I like, can go to forest. And I can learn wisdom from the, you know, the sages. So and that he showed the example of how to behave in difficulties. Although he went to forest, and forest also a dangerous place, you know, when um, danger can come anytime. So we can kind of do the analogy to our situation. Uh, due to circumstances, we are forced to be at home. <laughs> but we can look positively and see now we have a time to read and chant and deepen our uh, the relationship with Krishna and surrender to Krishna. And now look at us. We are like Ramachandra taking example and listening from you, Sadhu, all these lectures, virtual lectures. So I thought how wonderful you are speaking on this matter and I remember this from your book. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. That's a beautiful example. You know, that basically Ra- Lord Ram's mood is that there is distress. Let me act in a way that minimizes the distress. That minimizes this. So the, the way Ram deals with Lakshman, with his fa- Dashrath Maharaj, with Kaikai, with Kaushalya. There is a, I have written the book Wisdom from Ramayana in which there is a whole chapter on this. Ram basically tries to minimize everyone's distress. So that's the same thing that focus on your dharma, not on what is whose karma. In fact, a similar theme comes in the Mahabharata also, that when Abhimanyu is killed, at that time Arjuna is devastated and he starts lashing out even at his own brothers. He says that, you know, are all your or- all your weapons just like bangles? Are they just for show? Couldn't any of you protect my son? So at that time Krishna says to Arjuna that Oh Arjuna, your brothers are just as distressed as you are. In this world distress comes upon everyone. The difference between the wise and the foolish is that the wise act in a way to minimize the distress and the foolish act in ways that maximizes the distress, that increases the distress. So, you know, we, if the philosophy of karma can help us to uh, approach reality in a way that we can minimize the distress, that is positive. So, Krishna doesn't go so much into philosophy. Krishna doesn't tell that Arjuna that this was your karma or Abhimanyu's karma or whatever. He doesn't go over there. He focuses on encouraging Arjuna to respond in a way that minimizes the distress. So, each one of us... And now we are, we can't physically go outside much. We can't go outside, but we can always go inside. We can go inward to through the, our devotional practices. Not just do the practices as a ritual, but do those practices as a means for connecting with the Lord inside us. Uh, pray more devotionally, contemplate. Uh, I didn't mention about journaling, but in today's session, but this ACE, you could make a list of what is good for, 
the good that is always with you good around the bad good to help counter the bad good that may emerge from the bad and this way we at a personal level connect with the lord and we can take this opportunity where physical mobility has been restricted we can use that to increase our spiritual mobility we can't always go outside but we can always go inside so thank you very much for your attention and participation thank you, thank you.